This is my first vlog since becoming Mrs. Gore. Yes, I'm now Alicia Gore. And, um, you know, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't let you change your channel name. So um, I'm saying Alicia R. Um, uh, otherwise, it would have been Alicia Ag. <laughs> And so I wrote something up, and so you will see me reading because um, I had to put my thoughts down last night. I, I was quite restless last night because um, I've been wanting to say this for a really long time. And uh, the topic of my vlog is how do politicians have the time for extramarital affairs? Hmm. Obviously, having too much time on their hands too many politicians in government, too much spending, and too many people who have people who have people equals nothing gets done. Because what needs to be done goes through way too many hands. Until, like the telephone game, by the end of the line, what needs to be done has already been altered into the question of, wait. Why does this need to be done? And when you ask why, you've already stopped making things happen. You question, you don't do. Now, what does extramarital affairs have to do with politics? I mean, sure, it's a person's own personal, own private life, right? Bill Clinton did it, and if Bill Clinton does it, well, damn, it couldn't be wrong, right? Well, so this governor, Mark, what's his face? Mark Stanford, right? He did it in South Carolina, where actually adultery is illegal, okay? There were a lot of states where adultery was illegal. I don't know why it's suddenly not illegal. Adultery is adultery. You're betraying your wife your children. This is a betrayal. Um, so adultery is a crime and Governor Mark Sanford, Governor Mark Sanford, uh, committed this crime and then lied about it. Ah, oh, that couldn't be wrong. No, of course not. Jeez. Did he think we were dumb? Like he went hiking and, you know, we're supposed to believe that? Uh, you know, when I saw people you know, blogging uh, about him uh, hiking and saying, oh, yeah, I wish the government would take a hike. Like, hiking? Are you kidding? I blogged afterwards. He's not hiking. He's got a, he's got a lover somewhere. That's BS. I work a 40-hour-a-week job, and I barely have time after, you know, um, cooking dinner, cleaning the dishes, doing the laundry, you know, taking my daughter out to places that she'd like to be taken out to. I mean, after all that, I barely have time to read a book, let alone have an affair with another man, you know? I mean, geez. Iron's out there on a ladder, so <laughs> I'm watching him carefully. You know, does running the city or state or country take less than 40 hours? I'm thinking maybe 60. How about 100? Uh, my dad runs his own company, and I kid you not, he does no less than 60 hours a week. And I dare say he probably runs more than 70, you know? Where do these so-called leaders get the time to have sex on the side? What the hell are they flying off to Argentina on the, pax, on the, on the taxpayer's dime to have sex? Are our politicians worse? I hope they're expensive because we have a budget crisis going on, not only in one state, but in all states. The only people who are doing anything about it are the workers and the business owners. They work their tails off to keep this country running. And we have politicians who run around like chickens with their heads cut off. They're making extreme purchases and having affairs. What the hell? If General Motors is so much in debt that they have to cut jobs, cut people, then why aren't we doing the same thing in government? Why with a budget crisis that would make a rich man cry, 
why are we retaining people that we're, we don't need? Can someone explain to me why, if the government is handing out IOUs, that we should trust them? We went from gold and silver to greenbacks, now to IOUs, without any trust in government, how could an IOU be worth its weight in BS? Tell me again, if politicians have the time for affairs, what are they doing for us? They can't keep it in their pants. What the hell are they doing around the office? I'd really like to know what gets done around the office besides ask. Fire them. Fire them off. We need Donald Trump to step in and find out who's really pulling their weight and who's not. And in his, you know, his investigation, I trust. I would love to see all the people who don't pull their weight get sacked. And then I'd like to see all the people who almost pull their weight get sacked. And then I'd like to see the people who pull their weight and then some. I want to see them running this city, state, country. Because honestly, the fewer hands, the fewer mistakes, the fewer miscommunications, crazy spending machines, and cockeyed operations will have. In addition to that, I think we must know the personal life and history of every politician in government. You may ask, what does that matter while you sit home and watch reality shows about John and Kate and the Kardashians, but who do you really need to know about? If we can spotlight every mole on our movie stars, why the hell are we not getting up close and personal with people who run our cities, our states, our government, you know, our countries? We need to know if they have strange histories, if they have drug histories, cheating histories, lying histories, financial problems, financial just oddities. We need to know those histories. Who are they connected to? Who are they in bed with? Do they have clean hands? Is everything they do serving some hidden agenda? Who's lining their pockets? Who do they serve? Us or some big pharmaceutical or other type company? We need to know so that we can make informed decisions. It's not like we're curious to know. We need to know. If you're going to make laws, we must know who the hell are you to make laws and then break them. I say we need to purge our government. You have high spending, high salaries, high lifestyle, and it needs to stop right here, right now. Get rid of those people that you don't need I'm sick of hearing about government spending. So just like GM, you're going to have to shut down some of your offices. Get rid of people. Tighten your belts. Pick up the slack. Do your damn jobs and more. My dad does it. So can you. And if you can't, then don't let the door hit you on the way out. Go back to school. Go back to the school of life and learn how to get something done. But... I don't want you making my laws. You're not fit to show me how to live my life and the lives of millions and millions of people. I'm not interested in socialism. I'm not interested in police states. And this is exactly where this impractical, useless government waste is taking us. Don't give us excuses. Don't give us ridiculous large doses of BS. Those solutions that you intend on making law into five years from now, that's ridiculous. If it takes five years to get something done, there are way too many people. There are way too many people in between making the line totally stagnant. If I had my choice, I'd get rid of all of you all over again. This country was built on the backs of dedicated men. Dedicated men built this country, and selfish men are destroying it. Get your hands out of people's pockets, pick up your hammer and nail, and build it again. 
this country can go back to its roots. It can go back to its prosperous glory days. It can be what so many immigrants experienced and want it to be. The land of the free, the brave, the dream. You're supposed to be in charge and do your job and keep your hands on that hammer and nail and out of our pocket and away from other skirts and decide who you are, what you're made of, and make this world a better place. If you discover you cannot do this, you're a traitor, and all traitors should be cast aside and ignored. And then you should be left to your own ignorance, your own inabilities, so that you can rot in hell. Leave the real work to the real men who want this country back. The men who make this country great, no matter how you try to tear it down. The men who will continue to fight so that I and my children and their children will still have a country they can be proud to call home. We need leaders, not liars. We need men who work tirelessly through the night to fix the problems of this country and not the bulges in their pants. We need trustworthy people, trustworthy people who care about every man, woman, and child in this country. If you cannot honestly say that is you, then you are in treason to me and to them and have no business being here. You are just causing havoc in our government, and that is terrorism. I want someone who's proud to know that they, they have lived a dream and that other people deserve to live that same dream, that we deserve to be free, happy, goal-oriented, and enthusiastic about life. We deserve it. Our children deserve it. Give me and my fellow Americans the respect we deserve and either do your jobs and give us back the country we loved or get out and we'll find somebody who can. That's all I have to say about that. Good night. Good luck. <laughs>